Hello students, myself Stetan Gar, your mentor for today's lecture and I welcome you all to our International Mathematics Olympiad series. In this series, we discussed previous year questions of uh, Mass Olympiad exam of various different countries and in today's lecture, we are picking up the country Canada, right? And so we will be discussing some previous year questions of Canadian Mass Olympiad exam, right? So, uh, and if you want to prepare for uh, any of these exams in India, then uh, you should fill up this Google form vdnt.in slash vosmass2. Our concerned person will call you and uh, will help you out in getting enrolled in these batches. Right? These batches are completely free of cost. You don't have to pay even a single penny to, involve, uh, to enroll in these batches. Right? So let's start the session. Uh, this is from Can uh, CMO 2014 exam. The question says that let A1, A2, A n, uh, these are positive real numbers. Right? And uh, uh, whose product is 1? Show that the sum this this this, this in uh, the sum of these numbers is greater than or equal to two raised to power n minus one upon two power n. Right. So we are given with the relation a one times a two times a three times and so on till a n. The product of these numbers is one. This is given. Right. And uh, all right. So let's let's pick uh, the numbers one by one. A one upon one plus a one. We can rewrite this number as just add one. And then subtract one, so that will be equals to simply uh, one minus one upon one plus a one. Right? This will be the first term. Now, similarly, if you add one and subtract one from the second number, we will get this is kind of telescoping sum, right? So uh, a two plus one will get cancelled out. So what we will get one upon one plus a one minus one upon product of these two factors, right? Similarly, and so on. If we talk about the last term, a n plus one minus one, just add one and subtract one, right? And that in the denominator we have one plus a one, one plus a two, one plus a three, and so on, till one plus a n, right? So what we will get? We will get one upon one plus a one, product till one plus a n minus one minus 1 upon 1 plus a1 product till 1 plus a n. This is what we will get. Now if when we will add when we add these things what we will get this will get cancelled out with this this will get cancelled out with the uh, next term and so on right. So all the terms will get cancelled out but we are left with first term and the last term. So the final this addition that will be practically equal to 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus a1 1 plus a2 product till 1 plus a n right now just let's consider this term this is what we need and we actually need to prove that this thing is greater than or equal to this thing right so uh, i'm just rewriting this term that is our 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus a1 1 plus a2 1 plus a3 and so on product till 1 or we can say a n plus 1 or 1 plus a n Right. We need to prove that this thing is greater than or equal to this thing. right? And clearly, if you see 1 plus a1 by our am greater than or equal to gm inequality 1 plus a1 upon 2, that will be greater than or equal to under root of a1. So you can say 1 plus a1, that will be twice of under root of a1. Similarly, 1 plus a2, that will be greater than or equal to twice of root of a2. 1 plus a3, that will be simply greater than or equal to twice of root of a3 and so on. right? 1 plus a n that will be greater than or equal to twice of under root of a n. Now if we if we multiply these terms what we will get? We will get the product of these n factors that will be greater than or equal to 2 raised to power n times under root of product of these things which according to our quotient is given to be 1 product is given to be 1. So we can say that this denominator this denominator this is clearly greater than or equal to 2 raised to power n. So this whole expression that should be 1 minus 1 upon this product, product of n terms, right? That will be greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 upon 2 raised to power n because this is one time this is reciprocate and then we have a negative sign also. So the inequality will remain same. It will not get interchanged, right? And this is nothing but this is equals to 2 raised to power n minus 1 upon 2 raised to power n. Right. So this entire thing will be greater than or equal to 
2 raised to power n minus 1 upon 2 raised to power m. This is what we need to prove, right? All right. So that was a simple question involving some uh, AMGM inequality plus some manipulations, right? So let's proceed to the next question. This is again a question of telescoping sum. The question says that um, n is varying from 1 to 1994 minus 1 raised to power n, n square plus n plus 1 upon n factorial. All right. So first let's rewrite this thing n square plus n plus 1 upon n factorial. Right. We can break it into two terms uh, n square plus n. All right. Or you can say n square upon n factorial plus n plus 1 upon n factorial. Right. So that will become how much? That will become n upon 1 n will get cancelled out. So n upon n minus 1 factorial plus n plus 1 upon n factorial. Right. Now let's let's uh, let's write the terms. So uh, when n is 1, so first term will be simply minus of what when n is 1, 1 factorial upon 0 factorial. Sorry, 1 upon 0 factorial. So that is 1 upon 0 factorial plus 2 upon 1 factorial. This is first term, right? Second term will be addition of because when n is 2, the minus 1 raised to power 2 will be plus. That will be 2 upon 1 factorial plus 3 upon 2 factorial. Next term will be negative because they are alternating sign. 3 upon 2 factorial plus 4 upon 3 factorial. Next term will be positive and so on. Last term, last term will be clearly positive because the power is 1994, which is an even number, right? So that will be plus of 1994 upon this 1993 factorial plus 1995 upon 1994 factorial, right? Now, when we add these things, you can see, see clearly this term will get cancelled out with this. This will get cancelled out with this and so on. The terms will get cancelled out. So initially one negative term is remaining. So at the end we will get one positive term. So finally the sum will be equals to 1995 upon 1994 factorial minus minus one. That will be the final answer, right? So 1995 upon 1994 factorial minus one. And as you can see that that was an easy question. Just a basic question of telescoping sum, right? So let's proceed to the next question. Now this is a good question. See, uh, here the function fx is given to be 9 power x upon 9 power x plus 3. In fact, this is a standard question in J preparation uh, in India, right? So, but uh, anyways, that is that was a question of 1995 CMO exam. And as you can see in this type of question, uh, either uh, what we can do, uh, just this thing, you can, you can see that 1 upon 1996 plus 1995 upon 1996, the sum of these two numbers is 1, right? So if I talk about fx, that is given to be uh, 9 power x upon 9 power x plus 3. And just calculate f of 1 minus x. So that will be simply 9 power 1 minus x upon 9 power how much? 1 minus x plus 3. So that will be 9 upon 9 plus 3 times 9 power x. Right? All right. So just take... Uh, 3 common, we can take 3 common from this thing. So that will be 3 upon 3 plus 9 power x, right? Now, if you add these two things, fx plus f of 1 minus x, that means this thing plus this thing. So what we will get? We will get 9 power x upon 9 power x plus 3 plus 3 upon 3 plus 9 power x, right? As you can see, denominator is same. So numerator will simply add and that is clearly equals to 1. So what that means in this particular question, what we have proved, what we have uh, got that f of x plus f of 1 minus x, that will be simply 1, right? So by this, this thing, because this, if this is x, then this is 1 minus x. So sum of first and the last, that is 1. Similarly, sum of second term plus second last term, that will be 1. Similarly, sum of third, plus third last term that will be one. So we can make the pairs, right? And how many terms are there? There are, there are 1995 terms, right? So how many pairs will be formed 1994 upon two? That comes out to be nothing but how much? 997. So 997 complete pairs will be formed, which will give us one as a sum. So we will get 1997, 997 sum plus f of the middle term. What will be the middle term? That will be, um, 
1998 upon 1996. This is the middle term, which is clearly what? That will be simply 997 plus f of half. Now just substitute x equals to half. We will get 997 plus plus how much? 9 power half. That is under root of 9 upon under root of 9 plus 3, which is clearly 3 upon 6, which is half. So answer will be 997 plus half, which is clearly 997.5. So that will be the final answer, right? So in this question, what was important to observe that uh, the sum of these two things can be a finite number, can be a finite number, and uh, by manipulation, by calculation, it comes out to be one, right? And this is a standard approach uh, in J, right? In J, a, a lot of questions in India uh, came from this concept, right? So let's move to our last question of this session. The question says that find all real solutions of the following system of equation, and uh, we need to justify our answers also, right? All right. Uh, the equations are 4x square upon 1 plus 4x square that is equals to y, 4y square upon 1 plus 4y square that is equals to z, and 4z square upon 1 plus 4z square that is x. So by these three equations, I can simply say that these x, y, and z they are greater than or equal to zero. They all must be non-negative because um, Each term on the left hand side is clearly uh, is clearly include uh, it consists of some whole squares and that is definitely greater than or equal to zero, right? So each of x, y, or z that will be greater than or equal to zero. Now let's let's just add these things. So we will get four x square upon one plus four x square plus four y square upon one plus four y squared plus four z squared upon one plus four z squared. And that is that is equals to y plus z plus x. Now, if we rewrite these things and uh, just take x on the left hand side, y on the left hand side, z on the left hand side. So, uh, if I take x common from these two terms, right? So I will get x times. Uh, okay, I'll also take the LCM, or you can say just take this term on the right hand side. So x times one plus four x. Square minus 4x upon 1 plus 4x square plus similarly y times 1 plus 4y square minus 4y upon 1 plus 4y squared plus z upon 1 plus 4z squared minus 4z upon 1 plus 4z squared that is equals to zero, right? And if you see, if we uh, simplify this thing, we will get x upon one minus two x whole squared upon one plus four x squared. Similarly, y times one minus two y whole squared upon one plus four y squared. Similarly, z times one minus two uh, z squared upon one plus four z squared. That is equal to zero. And clearly, we have claimed that x, y, z are non-negative. So this term is non-negative. This term, each term is in fact non-negative, and sum of the three non-negative terms is zero only when each of the terms should be zero. So this should be zero. This should be zero. This should be zero, right? And this is zero only when if x is zero, or you can say this term is zero, or you can say x is half. Similarly, this is zero when y is zero or half. Similarly, this is zero when z is zero. Or half, right? And as you can see, if x is zero, then this z has to be zero, and if z has z is zero, then y has to be zero, right? So either the solution, one solution will be zero, 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 right? Clearly. And now, if one is non-zero, if let's say x is half, if x is half, then z cannot be zero, and if z cannot be zero, then y cannot be zero. So the other possibility, other possible solution should be half comma half comma half, and you can check uh, all uh, these two solutions satisfy all the three equations, right? And that clearly means we will have only uh, two distinct solutions for this system of equations, right? I hope this is clear to you. If x is zero, then z has to be zero, and if z is zero, then y has to be zero. So this is one of the solution. If x is half, then z cannot be zero. If z cannot be zero, then z must be half. And if z is non-zero, then y cannot be zero. Then y must be half, right? 
so again this system will have only two distinct solution right so that's it from today's session guys today we have discussed some previous year questions of canadian mass olympiad exam and in the next session we will uh, discuss some previous year questions of uh, mass exam of some different country so see you in the next session till then please take a very good care of yourself thank you bye bye